Hi, I'm Mike, owner of the Ingram in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm going to show you guys a project that I've actually been working on since maybe 2019, about four years now. That is my absolute favorite record that has ever come out of the state of Arizona, Canelmas's Folk Stone Prism. Uh, the original of this came out in 1971. Very difficult album to find. Originals go as high as five grand. Uh, a copy sold on Discogs maybe about a year ago. I think it was 4,850 bucks. Extremely difficult to find. Uh, they're impossible. In the state of Arizona where they originated, I've only had one copy ever come into the store. This particular exclusive is a colorway variant. So Sundays originally uh, did it as a CD. Then they came out with a vinyl variant in 2020, which is just a black vinyl variant. I, I'll tell you, there's a big story involving why I did this, but I contacted Modern Harmonic to do a purple vinyl variant, which I thought represented this cover really well. Uh, so it is a, they call it like a black and purple swirl, but it's actually really just a clear and purple swirl. So clear and purple. Uh, I'll show it to you. Now there's supposed to only be 500 of these, but I think it might end up being less. So the original exclusive was for 500 copies. Something happened. I don't know if something got screwed up, but I was only shipped 320. I'm not sure if the others are going to come in the future, uh, but let's assume it's a limited edition of 500 copies, but I think it might be closer to 320. So the album comes with a book. The original did not, but it is a kind of a story with some photographs of the album, kind of an interview, I believe. I read it in 2020, I think, when it came out. So Canelmas, uh, Ken Walker, and Bob Narlock, originally, right? Uh, so the reason I wanted to do this particular album was I just loved it. So after I opened the store in 2015, I was very familiar with this. I collect and was really collecting Arizona records pretty heavily back uh, 2015, 2016. So I was familiar with the record, but Ken Walker actually would come into the store from time to time. Unfortunately, he didn't have any horror of uh, original Kanama's pressings, but he would come in and he was a very interesting cat. Uh, Ken, at this point in time, is not doing anything even remotely resembling this type of music. He is doing like covers, like guitar, one man covers, and he like plays at old folks homes, like nursing homes. So that's kind of his current gig at the moment. But I had approached him in 2015 to do this record. Ken, I talked to him, I'm like, you got the tapes, you own all the rights, so I'm doing the groundwork on this. I wanted to put this record out going back to 2015. He sounded great, I'm all on board, I wanna do it. I need to talk to my manager. I need to have a conversation with God. I'll get more into that in a minute. So I'm like, do you have management? And I'm talking to him a little bit about it. And what ended up happening was in the 90s, he put out with Sundays a CD. And I kind of think he thought maybe they were his manager at this moment. Now, at that particular moment in time, 15, 16 years later, I don't know if he had been receiving money from them at any point point during the last 15 years. It didn't really sound like it, but he seemed on board. I'm like, Ken, I'm going to give you a bunch of money. We're going to do a record. You're going to give me the tapes. I'm going to have a cut. It's going to be analog. We're going to recreate the cover. I was all thrilled. I was pumped. This was going to be the record. I wanted to put this record out. I love this record. Now, at that point in time, you could only get two versions. You could get the original, which I have here. This is an original. Folkstone Prism. This was done at Wakefield. Ken actually worked at Wakefield, one of the absolute best pressing plants of all time, considered one of the greats. Wakefield in Phoenix, Arizona. He worked there. This record was actually made in the middle of the night. They actually, he pressed it himself in the middle of the night. The slick was just a generic white slick, and they actually glued this onto it. Okay, so let me show you, give you the run. Give me the full length story here. So he glued this on the front and the back, right? So that was the back, that was the front. It was essentially a piece of paper. He glued them on himself. Uh, it sold extremely poorly. I talked to Ken about it a little bit. 
he said pretty much he didn't even know if they ever had sold a copy of this. I think, uh, you know, these records were essentially utilized to do rock star related things. Is I'm going to clean it up for you guys and tell you guys he was using these records as giveaways to do rock star 1980s Motley Crue type of things, right? We're going to go with that. Can you infer what I'm getting at here? So that essentially was all this record was used for in the day. It wasn't successful. It didn't sell well. But in the 90s, Rockadelic actually contacted Ken and put out this. This is the Rockadelic reissue. What was cool about the Rockadelic reissue is they used the original metalwork to cut the record, to make the record, because Ken still had it. Ken had the original slick on the front, and he actually had the original slick on the back. Really, you would not, they put a different, you know, put the Phoenix International label on it. You'd almost be hard pressed to know the difference between an original. But what they did do is they actually numbered them in the back. So the reissues are numbered by Rockadelic, and Rockadelic has its own unique label. But other than that, it's as close to an original as you're going to get. Okay, so at that point in time when I had discussed this with Ken, that was all that was out. This Rockadelic issue at the time was like a $150 record, okay? So there was no, you know, there was no affordable way to get this record. Now, Angel and me don't, my wife, don't typically listen to the same type of music. But this happens to be a record that she loves. And I love it. So we would play this in the store all the time. And people would come up to me and, Mike, this is great. You know, where can I get a copy of this? I'm like, we well, can't get a copy of it. I mean, if you could find one at the time, they were maybe twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. If you could find one, this is how much they would cost. Oh man, that's a bummer. I'm like, maybe you can find the CD at that time. Even that was hard to find. Oh no, I don't want a CD. I want the record. I'm like, well, you can get the Rockadelic record. It's about 150 bucks for the reissue. That got me thinking. I'm like, you know, I need to get this record. I need to get this record in print. Let me, you know. So I, I went to Ken. Like I said, he was going to talk to his management. He was going to talk to God. And I don't mean he was going to pray to God. Ken talks to God, according to him. They have conversations with one another, back and forth. Uh, very, very religious man. Very religious man. I talked to him for hours. He would come in, and I really wanted to get this record done. And at the time, he would come in for two, three hours at a time. Uh... And we would talk about the Bible, and we would talk about God, and it was a lot of days. A lot of days talking about Ken, talking about conversations he had with God, things God had told him. It was an event. It was a multi-week event. But I really wanted to get this record into print. Long, long Many long stories short. Uh, one of the things, too, I'll mention this. I played the record in the store one day. And actually, Ken, like those director cuts on like DVDs back in the day, they would do director commentaries. He actually went over in great depth recording this album. How it was done, where they did it, how many takes something took, how they achieved a specific sound. That was kind of cool. I wish I was able to record that. I didn't. But I was in the middle of the talks. Uh, he contacts me back and says, great news. I sp spoke to my management. We're going to get the record reissued. And I thought to myself, well, that's not the greatest of news because I wanted to reissue it. But his management, essentially the label, Sundays, was going to reissue the record. This was in 2015. I was bummed. I was out of the picture. No more Canelmas. I didn't know what was going on. I think what ended up happening is he kind of contacted them, <laughs> reminded them, like, hey, uh, we can do something with this record. You did it in the 90s. We can do it again. And then the wheels got turning. Five years later, they came out with the black vinyl exclusive. I think it was announced maybe 2019, 2020. That's when I started the wheels on doing the doing the uh, colored variant. COVID happened, production delays happened, things got lost, 
one thing led to another. It took till mid-2023 to actually get it out. But that was the very first time that I kind of ever thought to myself, like, I want to reissue records. I want to do, like, I was gun hold for that in 2015. And that, it started with this particular record. I don't know if that's something I'm gun ho about now. I'm not uh, nuts about it's very complicated. It is difficult. It is hard dealing with labels, dealing with artists. I don't know if that is for me at this point. So this might be the record that actually starts my journey into putting my own records out. And it might be actually the record that finishes my journey into putting <laughs> records out. Because it's just years. These projects take absolute years to put out. It is kind of cool and it is super rare. Again, I don't think it's going to last long. I'm probably going to have at the most 500, but it looks like I said, I might get around 300 of these things. But yeah, so this is theoretically the first in-groove exclusive because I've done some records myself, right, with my buddy Johnny. It, it was a, You only could get that record with me. This is more of the traditional exclusive to where it's just a color variant. But you know what? If you want this record, like... This is the one that you want, right? Because it matches this cover so perfectly. On a side note, listen to the record. I don't think I've talked about how fantastic this record is enough. Side one is all instrumental. Side two, uh, there is vocal. A lot of people prefer side one because it's really great psych fuzz instrumental. I actually really like uh, side two. Tell me what you guys think about this record. I don't know if any of you guys have it already, what you guys think. You can stream it online, but it is fantastic. On a side note, this is mastered by Kevin Gray, by, you know, Modern Harmonic, which is a sub-label of uh, Sundays. But this is on the Modern Harmonic label. This is a Kevin Gray cut. It actually does sound fantastic. But, yeah, there it is. You can get it on the website, uh, theingroove.com. Uh, it has... <laughs> in groove sticker and it is a color exclusive okay i'll show you one more thing before the album actually came out in 1971 the original album he actually did put out a single this is the single almost none of these came with the actual picture sleeve the picture sleeve he did himself they were all made by ken back in the 70s himself maybe four or five of these picture sleeves exist it's kind of a hand you know they kind of silk you know, it was like a, maybe a silk screen sleeve, and then he sharpied in this this block. You know that that square, and it's just on a generic paper. But yeah, so this actually, on a side note, has four of the tracks. I think four of the tracks that are on the actual album, but they're earlier versions of them. They're not as good musically, uh, almost like demos. I think you would consider them at this point in time. Patty's dream. Mother of My Children, I Don't Know, Litter Go. I don't know if Litter Go is actually on the album. Let me see. I gotta look now. Okay, so Litter, Lit Her, uh, Litter Go was not actually on the album. But the other three tracks are. Again, I truly love the guy. It's, a, it's musically fantastic. I know I've been going on and on for a while, but I thought it'd be a cool little story to tell you guys about how I got involved in this. Show you guys my uh, Ken Walker, Canelmas collection. There was actually a second album that was done in the late 80s, maybe the early 90s. It's not nearly as good. It's nothing to the caliber of the original. Uh, but I don't know if you can even listen to that online. But if not, you can buy originals of that for like 50 bucks. It's not nearly as desirable as the first one. But yeah, the maybe last but first truly in-groove exclusive Exclusive color variant. Uh, yeah, it's online now. I think it's kind of cool. It's a little bit of in-groove uh, history. I know it's a lot of my record store history. Again, just thinking about the process, what was involved getting this to uh, starting to fin you know, to getting an actual version of this that's an in-groove exclusive. It's been a, uh, a long, long, tedious, uh, almost 10 years to do it. But yeah, theingroove.com. Until next time.